Well, hello, I want to welcome again to a reading through of the book of Jude, and I got up to verse 8. The Greek of this is fairly difficult. This is good literary koine, uh, with religious meanings and so on, and there's quite a bit of um, technical vocabulary and so on. I'll just translate as best I can, but again, you'll need to consult commentaries on the more specific meanings and theologies here. So starting at verse 8, Homoios mentoi kai hutoi en upniadzomenoi saka men mi ainusin kuri oteta de athetusin doxas de blasphemusin. We get the combination of these two uh, these adverbs here, so it's something like however. In like manner also, they, and the they is referring back to um, the people mentioned in the earlier parts, en upni adzominoi, now en upni asdomai is to dream. You can see the hupnos root in here. So being in a dream, so it's just dreaming. Uh, now we get a men, um, and we're going to get a balancing de here. So, uh, me ainusin, from me I know, they defile the flesh. Uh, we get two deaths, sorry. Um, and, so on the one hand, they defile the flesh. And, arthetusi, um, from arthetio, it's uh, alpha privated. The thet root is from that tithemi. So, we have the word athetize in modern English. It means to set aside, uh, flout might be good. Um, so on the one hand they defile the flesh, but they flout curi oteta from curi otes authority. Third declension noun. They uh, flout authority and uh, they blaspheme doxas. Now this is that funny use of doxas that you also get in 2 Peter 2.10. It apparently is a reference to angels or celestial beings. So doxas um, literally um, glories, but apparently it's, it is some reference to angels. Hode uh, Michael ho angelos hotito diabolo diacrinominos dialegeto peri to mauseo somatos uk et holmes en crisin ep en enkain blasphemias ala apen epitimesai soi kurios and the Michael, the archangel when, or the chief angel, or the archangel when, and we get a participle um, dia crinominos and a main verb de elegeto so, dia quinominos is something like disputing, and dia lego is to argue. So, when disputing with the devil, he was arguing regarding the body of Moses. He did not dare. Ep enenkain is an aorist infinitive, it's epi and pharaoh, to bring against. So, he did not um, bring against a christian a judgment or perhaps charge of blasphemy but he said epitimesi now that is an aorist optative of wish so another optative we've had one earlier we've had I think, two of these so it's an optative from epitima to re rebuke kurios with the usual meaning of yahweh so may yahweh rebuke you takes a dative the reference here seems to be to that work, the Assumption of Moses, um, and it, it's a a, um, a work that is didn't didn't get into the Old Testament. It's one of the pseudepigraphal works, reference to the uh, the Assumption of Moses, which I'll leave the commentaries to explain. So, um, so, but he said, "May Yahweh rebuke you, who toy de hosa men uk oida sin blasphemusi hosa de, 
Spusi Kos Hos Ta O Aloga Zoa Epistanai in Tutois Therontai. Now again we get a nice men and a balancing debt, Hossa men and Hossa debt. This is good um, Greek, sort of thing you'd expect in classical Greek, someone who's certainly uh, aware of the proper use of um, the men and debt in Greek. So these uh, as they blaspheme as many things as on the one hand they do not well know or perhaps have knowledge of uh, but as many things as epistantai this is from epistemi to know to understand but as many things as they do understand physicos well, it's hard to translate this. It's, it means um, in a physical way, naturally. Um, others translate it as by instinct. Uh, uh, so, but as many things as they understand by instinct or by fleshly knowledge, by physical knowledge, uh, like the unreasoning beasts, like brute beasts, unreasoning beasts, same expression occurs in 2 Peter. They will, they are perishing in these. So it's these, this, um, the th things that they understand. Uai autois, woe to them. Hoti te hodo to kain e poruthesan, kai te plane to balam misthu. Ex ecuthe son, kai te antilogia to kore apolonto. We get some further references to the uh, Old Testament stories here. So woe to them because they walk, they conduct themselves. This use of poruamai in the sense of to live your life, to conduct yourself. They, you could just say they walk in the way of Cain. Reference back to Genesis and um, ex ecuthesan. This is an aorist passive from ekheo. It literally means to pour out, and it's passive. So they have been poured out, and it, it it's it has that sense of they've given themselves over to. They've become dissolute. They've abandoned themselves to the error. Um, of Balaam, and then I think the misthu here is for a reward, sort of a defining genitive here, or an extended genitive here. So they abandon, abandon themselves for a reward to the error, to the wandering literally, from, this is plané, connected with the verb planar, or the wander, to the uh, the error or the wandering of Balaam, so this is referencing back Numbers 22, same, ref same mention was made in 2 Peter. And to the antilogia, literally contradiction, but I think this is often rendered here in this context as rebellion of Korah. And this again is referencing Numbers chapter 16. So they, and they perished in the antilogia, um, the rebellion of Korah. Hutoi asin hoi entais agapais humon spilades sun u okumenoi are for boasts. And I'll just I'll pause it there. So they are the ones, so sorry, no, they are, yeah, they are hoi spilades. Um, this is the blots or blemishes uh, in the love of. Well, we have to supply uh, Heortes here, I think, in the Love Feasts. This is a reference to early communion services, I think. So, they are uh, blots or blemishes on your Love Feasts. Sun Uokumenai, this is from Sun and Uokumenai. Uh, same word occurs, it's an extremely rare word, it only occurs in a couple of places, and it occurs, of course, in 2 Peter as well. It's those feasting with you. Are you okay as a feast? So those feasting with you. Fearless. 
they are without fear. Adverb. He autus poi mine ontes. He autus poi mine ontes. Uh, poi mine is to shepherd, so it's literally shepherding themselves. Now the meaning appears to be looking after themselves. Shepherding themselves, looking after themselves. Nephili anodroi, hupa anemon para feromenai, dendra phthinoporina akapa dis apothenonta uh, ek rizothenta, kumata agria thalases ep aphrisdonta, tasia ton aiskunas, asteris planetai. Hois hot sophos to Scotus as Iona Terretai. And they are waterless clouds. So this is alpha privative, linking new and in the hood root here of without water. Again, the same expression occurs in 2 Peter. Waterless clouds being carried along by winds. Participle here agreeing with Nephili. They are fruitless trees, thinner parina. Now this is an adjective, compound adjective. Uh, it's referring to autumn. So in the autumn, in the time when uh, there is, it's connected with that verb of waning. So it's when the trees are waning, so they've given up their fruit and their leaves and so on. So they're fruitless trees in autumn. This apothenonta literally having died twice having been uprooted this is from ek plus ridzoo is the verb and this is the aorist passive participle um, so ek ridzoo if you're looking it up so uprooted having died twice not quite sure what that means presumably it means in some sense died because it's autumn and then they've, been, they've died because they've been uprooted uh, Kumata Agria, uh, wild waves of the sea, Epaphrisdonta. This is another extremely rare word, lots of very rare words here. The word occurs once in Moscus, uh, in the um, Europa, I think, of Moscus, but it's only here in the New Testament, it's very rare. It's made up of epi plus the aphros is a word meaning foam, and so it's foaming up. It's um, when waves make a lot of foam. So it's literally foaming up their own deeds of shame. There are various paraphrases of that. That's about the best I can do with it. So it's wild waves of the sea foaming up. In other words, frothing up their own deeds of shame. Uh, perhaps it means covering them up or something I'm not sure you'd have to check but the common how the commentator explains this one it's literally foaming up their own deeds of shame asteris planetoi wandering stars a, a planetes is a wanderer so it's actually two nouns here but I think it's we meant to take the second one as an adjective wandering stars for whom Hot sophos, the gloom or the darkness, or the, the gloom of darkness, uh, has been kept for it forever, for eternity. Again, you get similar language in 2 Peter. Pro efetusen de kai tutois heb domos apo adam henok legon idu aelthen. Curios in Hagiais Muriasin Autu, Poiesai Chrisin Catapanton Kai Elenxai, Parson Psukain Peripanton Ton Ergon Asebeas Auton, Hon Asebeisan Kai Peripanton Ton Scleron, Hon Elalesin Cat Autu Hamatolu Asebeis. Very long sentence here. Now we get the verb profetuo, and the augment's very unusual here. They've taken it as though it was a 
compound verb, pro plus fatua, whereas in fact generally the augment, if it is augmented, comes at the beginning, not in the middle here. So it's a very unusual augmentation, just to note. So uh, now the subject here is, it's Henoch, but it's the book of Enoch. There's a reference here to the book of Enoch. Again, one of these, I think it's Enoch's chapter 60. It's one of these um, Old Testament's um, uh, books that didn't get into the canon, so the book of Enoch. So Enoch, who was seventh from Adam, that is, the seventh in line from Adam, prophesied uh, also, perhaps against them, Legon saying, Behold, Yahweh came, now this definitely is the with, I think, with uh, a myriad of holy ones, uh, a myriad is 10,000, but it often simply means used for a large number, with a myriad of holy, of his holy ones, poiesi, aorist infinitive, to make judgment against all of them, and elenxi, elenko, to convict or reprove, the aorist infinitive, uh, to reprove each soul, um, regarding all the works asabaios of their impiety and then it gets attracted relative gets attracted into the genitive so which they impiously did so this is asabio to do something in, to act impiously so to do that uh, bit again so um, so enoch seventh in line from adam prophesied also against them, saying, Behold, Yahweh came with myriad holy one, of his holy ones to, well, to make judgment against all of them and to, re, to reprove or to convict each soul regarding all their works of impiety, which they did impiously, and regarding all the sclerones. Skleros means hard or harsh, uh, some translators, I think, say defiant here. It's just harsh, really. Regarding all the harsh words which, again, attracted into the genitive, which they spoke, uh, which the impious sinners spoke, cat outu, against him. Hutoi asin gongustai mempsimoiroi katatas epithumias hiauton Paul Omenoi, a kai tostoma alto and lale hoop erg onka, hoop er onka, thou masdontes prosopa o phileas carin. They are the gongustai, these are the grumblers or mumblers. Gonguzdo is the verb, it's probably onomatopoetic, sort of gong has that sense of mumbling and uh, complaining. Uh, and th this is the first declension masculine noun, Gonguste is a, a grumbler. Um, uh, Mempsi moroi uh, is connected with the verb memphomai to blame, uh, someone who complains. Um, and the moiroi is to, 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 to do with one's lot, so it's blaming one's lot. It's a were literally complaining of their lot, of what they were given. Uh, sometimes translated as disgruntled. It's a late word, it does occur in Lucian and Aristotle. So it means in Oiron, those who complain about their lot. So they are the grumblers, those who are disgruntled, or complain about their lot in life, according to uh, sorry, no, uh, going or conducting themselves, as that class, that Septuagint meaning of Paru am I, conducting themselves according to their own desires and uh, their mouth speaks. Now this is this very, fairly rare word again. It's also in 2 Peter 2.18. Uh, it means it's got to do with um, puffed up or inflated, boastful. So their mouth 
Their mouth speaks boastful or inflated or bombastic things. Uh, Thomas Dantes prosopa. This is a very odd uh, expression here. It may be a septuagintalism. It's literally uh, a septuagintalism taken these two words together. Uh, you normally get lambano with this one here and not thalmasto. Thalmasto to be amazed at or wondering at. Uh, admi can mean admiring. So it could be, li it's literally admiring faces. Uh, now Karen plus the genitive and this coming after is post positive. This is very classical usage. It's Karen uh, for the sake of uh, Ophelia gain. So th this may also, uh, it's li literally admiring faces or it may mean showing partiality on account of gain, for the sake of gain. This is a classical usage, it's not, it's um, uh, cariness plus a genitive and in classical Greek it would come second after the word. So um, just to do this last bit, so they are the grumblers, the ones who are um, complaining about their lot. Walk, living, perhaps conducting themselves according to their own desires, and their mouth speaks boastful or inflated things. Well, perhaps showing partiality for the sake of gain, literally admiring faces for the sake of gain. You could take it as flattering, so uh, for the sake of gain is another possible uh, rendering of this, but I think it's a septuagintalism, meaning showing partiality. Again, the commentaries will expound this further. And that's the next section of the letter of Jude.